So, conspiracy theories. Yep, conspiracy theories. I've seen enough talk about them forever, but, you know, I've seen it recently again where it's been brought up with the, the whole shooting thing that happened, and I don't even need to go further into it. I'm sure you've all heard about it by now, right? It's all an act put on by the government for some ridiculously convoluted reason, right? And when we look at conspiracy theories, like, I'd laugh if it wasn't so dangerous. But instead, I have to sigh and shake my head. There you go. I sigh and my shaking of the head for them. But I can understand why they want to believe it. Like, this idea that rather than senseless chaos where people got shot because someone was deranged and there's no reason to it, no greater explanation, they can point to some malevolent boogeyman that secretly caused this whole event or somehow explains it away so it's not a meaningless tragedy in a crazy world, and instead is part of some greater pattern, and in a negative manner, it means something, perhaps, then. It's not just, again, some senseless act of senseless cruelty perpetrated by a deranged individual for no purpose. In essence, they want to make sense of a senseless universe where things just happen. And I can understand that desire, to, to want to ascribe meaning to the meaningless. But it's a trap. It, it poisons the dis real discussions that go on with these events, where instead of talking about the realities of why this happened and the meaningful discourse that should come after such a tragedy, we get people screaming about how the government paid the family to be actors and talk about it because they want to take our guns away so that like the New World Order can come about, or I don't know, some fucking nonsense. Or somehow it's all a veiled attack on the Second Amendment because the government just decided that uh, we need less guns? I really don't quite follow it to the end, I'm afraid. But the point is that Occam's razor gets tossed out the window really early in these discussions where the simplest answer that introduces the least new variables is the most likely correct one. And when we have a conspiracy theory, it flagrantly violates this rule because, well, instead of just having a shooter who commits an act of violence, we now have an entire government, thousands of people all working in concert in order to create this lie, which, in first and foremost, people of that magnitude don't keep secrets like that. Clinton couldn't get a blowjob in office without us hearing about it. Do you think over a thousand people are going to keep that kind of a secret for more than a day? Really? No, someone's going to leak because there's too much money in it. There's too much pressure. There's too much guilt. There's too much all sorts of things that swirl around these incidents where someone's going to crack. And it's going to happen pretty quickly, too. No group of thousands of people can keep secrets like that for a long period of time. It's just a fact. Someone's going to talk. You know, dead men tell no tales. There's a reason that's an old axiom, because the only way to really keep a secret is to keep it to yourself. And if you have that many people involved in it, it gets out. But beyond that, it, it flies in the face of all logic and reason to sit there and claim that thousands of faceless bureaucrats are going to somehow construct this entire tragedy from start to finish for some kind of malevolent and very convoluted goal. Why? Their interests are much more base than that. Let's be honest. It's not like they're trying to scheme some kind of new world revolution to control the world in some spiderweb-like contortion of manipulation that takes the whole world or something like they they don't want all of that they want to be comfortable they want to get paid and they want to be happy it's what most people want and sure there's a few people with all these aspirations of godhood and controlling the world but in reality they're crazy kooks that's all it is they're people who have ridiculous desires and they'll never make them happen be honest, when people talk about this new world conspiracy bullshit, or all of these things being instructed to take away everyone's guns or all that, the reality is that can't happen. If they said, we're taking all the guns away from America, just, what do you think will happen? Really, let's be honest, what do you think will happen? Have you ever seen Afghanistan, Vietnam, any place where there's an insurgent, an armed insurgency? Because, well, if they're trying to take the guns away from a lot of the people who are talking about this right now, apparently they're going to have 1776 all over again or some craziness like that from what I've heard. So, no, it's not going to happen. They're not going to have the UN marching troops on a defenseless America to impose a new world government. It's not going to happen. 9-11 was done by crazy people from 
over there in the Middle East with a big grudge to pick. It wasn't an inside job. Okay, let's... JFK was shot by a guy with grudge issues. Let's get all of this shit done with and out of the way. There were not ancient aliens helping people out. None of that fucking shit happened, okay? Occam's Razor tells us what happened. History tells us what happened. And common fucking sense generally tells us what happened. It's a product of confirmation bias here, where people are sitting there saying, well, you can't disprove it, or, well, I have this one bit of evidence that suggests it, ignoring the 9,000 other pieces of evidence that disprove it completely. And if you're going to believe something truly and completely and say that I hold this to be true, the first thing you need to do is put that shit to the test. Look at things that could disprove it. Look at the facts that challenge it and sit there and say, well, I can honestly and truly, with the information I have, contradict these challenges. If you can sit there and say that about your belief, you have something. But if all you can do is look at it and say, well, you can't disprove it, or, well, they just want you to think that, well, you don't have a leg to stand on then. You have nothing logical beyond you need to believe it. And if you're coming from something with a you need to believe it angle, that's not logical. That's not realistic. It, in fact, it's idiotic in a sense because you're running your mouth about a real issue that is important because people died at this point. People have died for this now. And you're spouting your weak nonsense because you need extra structure to the universe that doesn't exist. You need there to be some boogeyman in the closet who secretly made it all happen because you can't handle the fact that people are sometimes just deranged and they do bad things for no reason. And fuck you for polluting a real, necessary, healing discussion from people who are suffering and having tragedies go before them and are still reeling from the sudden death of people they love for no reason. Just an arbitrary, this guy went crazy and decided they died, so they died. And all you can offer is your weak, convoluted bullshit about how some secret agency and thousands of faceless fucking people made it happen, and how the family that is grieving is just a bunch of paid actors. Like, fuck you. That is not only disrespectful, it's goddamn inane and it's hurtful. There's a time and a place for you running your fucking mouth about your bullshit, and it is not in the public discussion about it. You know, you have freedom of speech. Fine, I get that. And I'm not actually trying to tell you you can't talk about it, but have some courtesy at least, you know. Take your beliefs and talk about them in your circles over there or something. Don't demand that us people who are being sensible about all of this and looking at facts entertain your nonsense while we're trying to actually heal. Don't do that. We don't have time for it. There's a real fucking tragedy going on with real consequences and real people involved. Your made-up fairy tale excuse, apologetic sort of reasoning behind all of this doesn't help anyone. Just shut the fuck up. Let us have our discussion. And maybe ten years from now you can bring this up on the internet or something and we can have a discussion where we tell you that you're full of shit then. Until then, you know, we don't need it. It's not helpful. And we're trying to figure this stuff out by having discussions. As ridiculous as they can get at times, we're still trying to cope with this each in our own way. Don't muck with it. Not your place yet. Wait a while. Just chill out. We'll entertain your childish beliefs when we have time for it. And if you think I'm being overtly harsh here, where oh, well, I'm really coming down on these people and you can't really disprove it and how are you just saying that you know what's going on? Well, fine. In a way, yeah, I'm being harsh about this. Yes, I am. And there's a reason for that. Because it's bullshit from start to finish. There's nothing you can show me, no evidence, no proof that any of this deserves merit. And until you can prove it with facts instead of confirmation bias and half-truths and using the first reportings on the situation as absolute biblical fact here, when, as we all know, first reports are often inaccurate because there's kind of this whole chaos of a shooter thing going on, you know, if you can actually come to this discussion with proof and evidence and logic and say that, look, I have real proof and evidence that this is a malicious thing going on, logically it bears out because of these facts and figures and information, then we can have that discussion. But Alex Jones telling you that it's all a secret conspiracy by the lizard people or something, and then your only evidence is Alex Jones said so, that's not evidence, that's not logical, and we don't need to entertain that. Alex Jones is synonymous with a funny joke for a reason. 
because it's a funny fucking joke until you bring it into a real discussion.